3D printed EDC. Is it really a thing? I don't know. I do know that if you have the ability and you have a printer, you could get a pretty decent start on the spare essentials, that the wallet, key organizer, and maybe a couple other things that were still in the works. So if you're interested in EDC and you have a 3D printer, or maybe you want to get into it, this might be a good incentive to do so. So I hope you'll stick around. You'll see what I'm talking about with this utility blade holder, and I hope you enjoy. This is Max Level ADC, and this is going to be a quick introduction to my utility knife. So I, there's some things I felt was missing with various different designs. There's some really nice ones like this one on Thingiverse that are made of two pieces, but they take longer to print, and they're not their locking mechanism isn't as secure as I would like. So I went ahead and redesigned and made my own design. Now this has got some features from other utility blades around there. Like it does take some of its cues from the cut, K-U-T. So this is quote unquote a remake, but it has definitely got some differences. For one thing, it has a pocket clip on it, which is great. It has hex bit driver, something that I figured why not have it. And then the way the locking mechanism works is also quite different. So when you print it, you'll have a little piece of extra plastic here that needs to be removed. You can see them right here. And all I did is just take a snip and then just, you know, peen it off. Now, look, I put a little notch here so you know how deep to cut it. And that's all you have to do with this. And the reason I did that is so you didn't have to worry about something like supports. I found that with small area like this, and that's the only support area, it didn't print it always very nicely and it just was easier to just cut it that way. So that's the way I would recommend it. Now, the way this works is once you've slot the blade in, in order to, like this is very secure, but in order to unlock it, you lift towards you and push forward. So that, that area passes the blade and then falls back into place. And when it's in its lock position, it's actually quite secure. Okay? So, I definitely like the way this turned out. It's something that I think is very easy to print. I think on mine, with 0.2 resolution, um, I think I did a 0.4 width as well. It turned out pretty solid. Now, I like the higher resolution, like I did here, but... It works fine on low res settings and that was something I wanted to test with this particular print. So I will put all that information in the description talking about the exact uh, settings that I used but it came out quite nice and this will work with um, with even the low resolution settings. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is well let me see if I can find it. All right, attachment let's talk about that. It took me a minute to find this. One of the requirements I had is it had to be capable of being used with a night ice s beaner, something I find very, very useful on a regular basis. Not only does it fit there, but it fits on the opposite side quite easily. And once you put that there, this blade cannot come out. So this is completely secure. That blade is not going anywhere, right? This will also fit in this hex hole, although I don't recommend doing that you may damage this this area right here so that's why this secondary hole is right here okay it's also in line so that it actually falls appropriately all right now last bit hex bit let's talk about the hex bit for a second now obviously it will it has a stopping point but how do you get it to um retain well here's the little trick here so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take an inner strand of paracord. It's a very thin piece of cordage. It's perfect for this. Just thread it through and then tie it in a loop. Okay? I'm going to make it simple here. I'm going to cut, I'm going to I can do a tighter one, but this is good enough. All right? That's it. It's all you're going to need. And now let me explain how that works with the hex bit. Now, for standard hex bits, if this will be a little loose, things will fall out, but with this in place, this will actually retain the hex bits. And when you want to pull it, you just pull it out, 
and it's good to go. So it's just a small amount of adjustment. It collapses, this piece of string will get pinched, and then you have full retention. So what I would suggest to do is just simply tie it off really nice and tight, you know, and then tie a knot, and then you have full retention in the hex bit. I didn't want to do anything complicated with the geometry that would require it to um, print a certain way. I wanted to keep it really simple, so that's exactly what I did. So I knew about this because I've tried it with the Leatherman signal and it worked very well. So I went ahead and just applied it to this principle. So now you have a retained hex bit driver as well as a utility blade. So I hope this was useful to you. I hope you will give this a shot and try it and give me some feedback. I'm, if there's something that I can improve, I will. But I wanted to make this available for free and I hope everyone enjoys.